Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. You guys are worried about me stepping on these eggs. I've got five kids. I do this every day. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, it's not a problem to dodge toys. It's those, it's Legos. those Legos in the middle of the night on the way to the kitchen. It caused me to lose my Christianity closely. Yeah. <laughs> you have your Bibles open to Proverbs chapter 31. It's in the middle of your Bible. Proverbs 31. We look at the passage of the capable wife. Johnny was complaining to a friend about how hectic his days were since he got his first job. I get up at six each morning and I eat my breakfast, he said. And his friend said, wait, you mean you get up at six and make breakfast? He said, no, my mom prepares it for me. She has to cook dad's breakfast at 6.30 anyway, so, you know, I have her cook mine. Oh, man, your mom gets up pretty early to fix you a breakfast. You know, no, she gets up early all the time. She likes to get up early. It gives her more time to do the things that she likes to do, mopping floors, dusting furniture, <laughs> shopping for groceries, preparing our lunch. Oh, he says, I, I guess uh, she has the afternoons off to herself. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she is off during the afternoon. She spends time playing with my little sister all day, sewing and preparing supper because my dad and I like to have supper at 6 when we get home off a hard day's work. We think that's pretty fair after all because mom doesn't have to work anyway. Well, I always get a couple chuckles and I always get some nice stares from the moms from the audience on that. We know, of course, we're saying this tongue-in-cheek. Because a mom's job is 24-7. And uh, it is, is do our honor. The scripture tells us that it's do our honor. And I want to share with you a couple things about moms. Um, you know, as a young man, I took a lot of things for granted what my mom did for me. And uh, for you ladies who are, are going to be moms one day, and uh, some of you who are moms and you're living that, and those of you who have uh, got your kids out of the out of the nest, and you are uh, relaxing a sigh of relief right now at this point in your life. Uh, Brother Gary just uh, did a wedding Saturday, and his son is booted, so I, the uh, life changes at home. I want to talk with you about that, but let's look at Proverbs and see what it says here, beginning in verse ten, chapter thirty-one. An excellent wife who can find. For her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She is like merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and portions to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it from her earnings. She plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor and she stretches out her hands to the needy and is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies belts to the tradesmen. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she smiles at the future. She opens her mouth in wisdom and teaches Teaching of unkindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She, her children rise up and bless her, her husband also. And he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. 
Give her the product of her hands and let her work. Praise her in the gates. You know, when we uh, read this, some of you out there are possibly thinking, well, man, that's just not how it is anymore, preacher. That's, that's just not kind of how it, how it rolls anymore. But I would tell you there's a lot of wisdom in this problem. Because we can take that and apply it today. And there's a lot of truth there that can come of it and how we can use this in our own lives. And how we ought to. And so I want to share with you some things that we need to be about with our mothers. And let me begin speaking to the sons and daughters in the room. Children, no matter what age you are, and I'm going to say children because that's what the Bible refers to you as. When you have a living mother and father. From nine months to 99 years, no matter how many children of your own that you have, the Bible says the gift you should give your mother every day is honor. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Honor your father and mother. That means that we children are supposed to treat our mothers with great respect in how we act toward them and in the way we speak to them. Now, now watch this. Did you realize that in ancient Israel, if a child cursed his mother, he was stoned to death? Exodus chapter 21 and verse 17. That seems kind of wacky, doesn't it? Like, whoa, that's kind of steep. I'm preaching. This is a new level of going behind the woodshed. <laughs> the, the reason why that was a law, watch this church real carefully. It's not wacky. The reason it was a law, watch this, because no children ever cursed their mother. It was a law, and you didn't lose kids left and right. Now, today, if that was in place, we'd have some problems, right? Uh -huh. Kids are like, yeah. do we have to stay on this subject? It, it, would, it would be a tough deal, but the fact of the matter is that in that century, in, in the Old Testament, and in the beginnings of the New Testament 2,000 years ago, kids did not say anything negative about their moms. They knew that law. They knew that that was true. They knew that being raised in, in ancient Israel, that that was part of the deal. But that was the furthest thing from their mind. Just like today, we would say the furthest thing from our mind is murder. But still, some people come and get pushed to a point, whether it's a drug deal gone awry or impropriety of some sort, where they actually toy with the thought that maybe that's an option. And then they step beyond that bound. You see, they didn't step beyond that bound in ancient Israel because they understood that honoring their mother was a big deal. Nothing angers me more, I think, than to hear children speak sarcastically or hatefully or sharply to their mothers. And, and I hear it all the time. I counsel kids all the time. I, I counsel parents as well. We have uh, a communications course for, for married couples and and a course for how to discipline your children and things like that to know the biblical way of doing those things. But still we see it in, in our culture. And it's contrary to God's will. I need you to understand that children, remember children is nine months to 99 years. Children, it is contrary to God's will. The Lord demands that you speak with the utmost love and respect to your mother. She is the instrument through which God gave you life. She put, watch this, her life in jeopardy every time a woman goes into a woman's hospital over there to have a child. Every single time that she gives birth, she is putting her life at risk. Now we know that, but we are just so good medically that it just, we've got such a good track record with the, the medical situation that we live in today that that's really not a big deal. But in those days, it was going in there and you were just praying that she would come out of it. But the mother chose to give birth in those situations. Just like the mother chooses to give birth now. And it is a big deal. We still, on occasion, have problems in the hospital. When Mercy was born, Danielle had complications. And that was the scariest thing like it was the furthest thing from my mind but when I was standing there in the hospital room with her and they pulled the sheets back and her bed was filled with blood 
and the emergency team came in and the doctor said get out of the room and they were screaming at me to leave and uh, I was watching my wife go pale as I was standing there watching her and they whisked her out of the room into the emergency room to go take care of what was a problem with a, a portion of the placenta and, and blood pouring out of her and they, they couldn't stop it they were going to have to take some measures to try to get control of it as a young father that scared the life out of me in a moment I was wrestling with the idea that you're going to raise these children by yourself and I understood in that moment how blessed we are to have moms and that we should not ever take that for granted the Bible says nine months to 99 years that we are to honor our mothers. She sacrificed many of the luxuries of her life in order to feed us, to clothe us, to educate us. So you must never be dishonorable to your mother in the way that you speak to her or about her. You must offer her the gift of honor in what you say. That is a command from the scripture. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right, and you will live a long and prosperous life on this earth. Did you catch that? It is the only command in Scripture that is followed with a promise. Did you know that? That if you are obedient to what your parents tell you to do, children, that you will live a long and prosperous life on this earth. But if you are not, that promise is not there. We are to honor our mother and father, and today's emphasis is on the moms. I was in West Baton Rouge Detention Center visiting my son. And Mother's Day is coming up, and he realized Mother's Day is coming up. And uh, he was talking about how some guys were looking through magazines, saying, wow, you know, I wish I could uh, buy this house for my mom. Because it was Mother's Day and they were kind of reminiscing. And another one of those guys that are in there said, I, I, this car, this car is really what I would like to get my mom. They said, what did you want to get? And he sat there quietly. He said, probably a more honorable son. I wish I could give my mom a more honorable son. A child's lifestyle, church, reflects on his parents. Catch this. Nine months to 99 years, however old you are. Your lifestyle reflects or is a reflection on your parents. If you want to give honor to your mother, then live an honorable life. <clears throat> when you're out with your friends having the time of your life, and you're far off from your from your mom's view. Ask yourself, would your mother be proud of what you're doing? Would your mom be proud of that? Are my actions honoring to her? The way you go about your schoolwork, the way you conduct yourself in your profession, how faithfully you exercise your spiritual life. All those things can bring honor or shame to our parents. All of those. God says that we should honor our mothers. Has our lives, has our lifestyle done that? Is a question we ask ourselves this morning. The second thing I want you to go away with is the scripture talks about obedience. Another gift that God says that you unmarried children must give to your parents. I'm speaking to the unmarried ones. So, Brother Gary, you're off the hook on this one. Your son is anyway, Gary. <laughs> 
As long as you live in the household of your parents, you have an obligation to obey them. I get asked this question all the time. I get guys come up to me and say, I'm a grown man, preacher boy. I can make my own decisions. I said, is your daddy paying your bills? Is your mama feeding you? Well, I'm a little down on my luck right now. And, and, and yeah, they help me out. Then honor your mother and father. You live under their household, live under their roof. Then you're subject to their rules. They're taking care of you. Amen. Amen. Now, I hate to slice that up. I know we're adults. But if I was under my mama's roof and she said, take out the trash, I would say, 50 years old. <laughs> you take out the trash. <laughs> she would take the trash out, but it would be by an ear and it would be me. We honor our parents every single time you're in it. That is just how God structured it. It is a beautiful testimony to the world outside as they look at that. So unmarried children, give your parents the gift of obedience. As long as you live in their house, you have the obligation to obey them. Provided they don't demand you to do something contrary to God's word, of course. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1 that we are to honor and obey our mothers and fathers. In Colossians 3.20, it says the same. It is our Christian duty to obey our parents. For that is the right thing to do. This principle applies to unmarried children only because the Bible says in Genesis 1 and verse 27 that at marriage a man leaves his father and mother and cleaves to his wife. And a woman at marriage comes under the authority of the husband the way that God structured it. So at that point you have the right to say okay. You're your own man. And ladies, you follow your husband, and, and, and he's the spiritual leader of the home. Now, this isn't some kind of sexist thing that I'm trying to preach here to you this morning. I'm trying to tell you, watch this, guys. That as the leader of your home, if things are hitting on all cylinders and everything's great, man, you take the credit. But if it's not going at home, you still get credit. If it's not great at home, you still get the credit because you are the spiritual leader in the household. So as the wife comes alongside her husband, it is a role that is defined as a helpmate. That is, those two things go together. They need to be together to make a whole. That it rolls perfectly when those two are meshed together like that. As he is the spiritual leader and she is the helpmate, they have two defined roles to live. And it works so much easier in that regard in the household. Because the children looking at the structure of the home understand the marriage of Christ and the bride, the church. And how those things go together and how we are following Christ. And that it is not some pre given his rules or thoughts or ideas on theology, but that we're following the cross for what was done for us there. Amen. Amen. You got some wacky guy preaching to you about something that's not in the Bible, you need to get out of it. If he's talking about himself, he said, I, 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 me, 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 me. You need to rethink what he's preaching. Christ alone. And so as we look at Christ alone, as we look at the scripture, we have to come to the grips of the fact that it says, children, nine months to 99 years, if you're under the roof of the household of your parent, you're going to be obedient to your parents. Amen? Amen. We're going to honor our mothers. We're going to be obedient to them. Now, the mother, if you're a child living at home and being supported by your parents, obviously the Bible says plainly that you should obey them. And you have to treat your mother with unequaled love, just as she has done for you. And that she has wisdom, and she's there to give you that wisdom. And sometimes we don't get it. Teenagers are always like looking, you know, when I was a teenager of 17 years old, for some goofy reason, you know, you, 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 you're in high school, you graduate, your first year in college, you're like, I'm smarter than my mom and dad. You know, that, that's what I was thinking. And then about 27 years old, I realized how much wisdom my mom actually had. After living life for 10 years on my own, I realized how brilliant my mother and father were. I'm like, man, the way you manage your money, Dad, you're just awesome. Speaking of which, times are tough. At which point my dad would say they are. 
probably need to get a second job. <laughs> Children, you learn a lot of stuff in school. But understand that you will never gain as much as you learn in school. And you may know core curriculum better than your moms and dads. Lord knows, I'm looking at my four, fourth grade son's math and work. I'm like, why can't just two plus two equal four? Why can't that just be? Why, why did I mess him up and get him a math? Because I taught him. But I'm not going to go there and chase that rabbit. And it will seem like you're smarter, but you'll never gain the wisdom that your mom and dad have gained over the years. You'll never catch them on that. So we honor our parents because of that wisdom. Amen? Now, we spoke to the kids. We spoke to the people who are unmarried. Now I'd like to end the sermon on the mom. And the importance it is to live a life that's an example to your children. The first gift that you could present to your children is to be the kind of person that you want them to be. You have to give them the Christian example on what you say and what you do. I want you to notice how the little girl, when you wear high heels, are going to slip on your high heels. And she'll put on your dress. And she'll come walking out the closet just like my three girls do. Dressed in my wife's clothes. Pretending to put on makeup because they want to be just like mom. Now listen to me. That should scare the life out of you. Amen. And this is not a Father's Day sermon that's coming around the corner. But dads, it should scare the life out of you when your son pulls on your hand like it says, Dad, I want to be just like you. There's some things that I would maybe want my son to be like me, but there is a whole heck of a lot that I do not want my son to be like. And so we point him to the cross. Amen? Amen. An exemplary life, the little girl is going to mimic her mother. Mom wears high heels, she's going to slip them on also. For this reason, moms, it's your sacred duty to live an exemplary life in word and in deed. You have the power to influence your child for good or for evil. So you must be a Christian example in your home. And it's sad, but true, a negative example can come by simply through carelessness. There's a little girl in Sunday school some years back. I was teaching the class. For the children, and for those of you who know me know that like children make my hair grow gray while I stand there. Okay. I, I don't know how my wife does it and how you ladies do it. God bless you who work back there and those ladies that are back there with the 40, 70 kids, however many kids they got back there right now. It just takes a special person. And God bless you for your help. I, I appreciate you. But I was teaching a Sunday school class one day and I asked a little girl to... Uh, read out of the Bible. She told me that she didn't like to read her Bible anymore because now she was grown up. I really didn't understand what her attitude was. You know, and I was fixing to straighten it out, you know, in front of the class. <laughs> That's why they don't have men teachers back there with those Sundays, because they don't have any compassion, my wife tells me. Just get away from the kids, Tom. <laughs> so as I was thinking in my head, mulling over what I was going to do to straighten this kid out, she replied to me, I've never seen my mother read the Bible, so it must not be as important as you say it is. <clears throat> wow. I didn't know what to say to her. Now I'm a preacher and I usually have something to say about everything. <laughs> but I didn't have anything to say to that. That hurt. So I thought, at what generation will this child, as listen to me, we accidentally model things that we don't want them to follow? At what point will we lose that? And it became evident to me that it's so important that in everything that we do, that we live and breathe Christ in all that we do, that we model it at home, we model it at work. 
We model it when we give. That's why the children stay in here while we're giving. Did you know that? So that you can model that for them. So that they ask you, Daddy, why, why did you put that money in there? And that you could use that to be able to teach your children the importance of impacting your community. Moms, you play the most important role in a child's life. But one of the most important things you can give outside of modeling what to do right, watch this as we're going to close, is your time. If you could just spend the time necessary with each child individually. Now I know it's hectic. I know I'm speaking to some single moms out here tonight. But here's the deal. The scripture says, he that honors me, I will honor. And so if you do that, as you strive to do and follow what Christ has called you to do, he's going to give you the time and the effort to be able to make those things come together. Amen? Amen. That's the Father's Day sermon is going to be way rougher. <laughs> Because we're the leaders. We have a community that's dying out there. And our children happen to be part of that community. And so what they see in the world is going to influence them. And what they see in the home is going to influence them. And it's so very important that we model it with our time and our effort. Amen? Amen. You know, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ showed up and he modeled with his time and his effort by giving his life sacrificially on the cross. And he said, whoever would follow me, whosoever will follow me. If they would call upon my name, would be saved. So all these things that we teach seem to make sense. You know why? Because they come from a God who loves you and makes a whole lot of sense. Let's stand together as we close.